Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on functional analysis. In this video, what we're going to do is prove that um, all convergent sequences in an abstract metric space are bounded sequences. Now, uh, first thing to note is that uh, in the previous video, when I proved to you that um, if if um, if around every if well, sorry, if uh, you'll remember that in the previous video to prove that. Uh, there were two definitions of boundedness uh, for a set to be bounded, and one of them was that if you take any point in the metric space, you can find a radius. Uh, so if you take any point x in a metric space, you can find an open ball around that of some radius r, which will completely contain your set m, and in that case, m is bounded. And you'll notice that in that proof, all that I actually required was uh, for this to be true of a single point in the metric space. Uh, I, if it was true for a single point in the metric space, then it would automatically be true for all points in the metric space. The reason being that if I can find an open ball around uh, around a single point in the metric space which contains M, well, basically, I can then find a uh, for any other point of the metric space, so let's say x prime, I can then find an open ball uh, around that, which will contain well, it will contain the whole open ball. This a whole open ball, and the and the way that you do that is simply um, take the dis uh, take the radius to be the distance between uh, the distance to be the di distance between x prime and x, and then add on the radius of this initial ball. So let's say this ball uh, was the ball open ball around the point x of radius r. Then what we're going to what we want to do is find an open ball around the point x prime and show that uh, that will contain well it will contain uh, not it will, it will contain this entire open ball this entire open ball and if it contains this entire open ball then it will also contain uh, the point at the set m the set big m and therefore if it's true around one point it will be true around any point. And basically, if you just use this as your radius prime, then it will work because uh, if you take any point in here, so let's say we have a y, which is an element of this open ball, so let's say this is our point y here, and we want to know that uh, this point y is going to be within our uh, open ball around x prime of radius r prime, uh, so um, if I draw that, um, it's going to make a mess of the picture, so I'll do it in a different colour. Uh, so uh, it's going to look something like this. Uh, again, it's just a picture, so don't worry about the fact that it's going outside the box. That's just to denote. Of course, it wouldn't go outside the box. I should probably draw it cutting off at the ends of the box like that. Uh, but just for a picture, that's uh, that's a fine intuition. Okay, and basically what I want to show you is that any point y, which is an element of this open ball, is also going to be an element of this open ball. And uh, to do that, I need to show you that the distance between x prime and y is going to be less than r prime. And all we do now is apply the triangle inequality. The distance between x prime and y is going to be less than or equal to the distance between x and x prime and x. So the distance between x prime and and x plus the distance between x and y. Okay, uh, so uh, if we again, I love colouring and doing this. Uh, so um, if we just draw that little triangle there, that's the triangle we're using the triangle inequality on. We're saying that this horizontal, well, this um, longest distance here is going to be less than or equal to the sum of the two side distances here. Like that. Okay, uh, so uh, we know that the distance between x and y, because y was in this ball, we know that the distance between x and y is going to be less than r, just by definition, and we know that the distance between x prime and x is some constant, so this overall thing here is going to be less than or equal to, so I'm just adding the distance between x prime and x onto both sides of this inequality to get the distance between uh, x prime and x plus the distance between x and y is less than r plus the distance between x prime and x. And then we'll use transitivity if this is less than or equal to this sum, and this sum is strictly less than this, then that implies that the distance between x prime and y is strictly less than r plus the distance between x prime and x. But that is exactly what I defined r prime to be equal to. So indeed, I have shown this inequality that I wanted to show. So basically, if it's true that I can find an open 
some ball uh, around a single point of the metric space, uh, let's say little x, uh, which contains the entire set big M, then it's true that I can find an open ball around any point x prime of the metric space, which will uh, contain the entire set big M. Okay, uh, so now, uh, with that in mind, uh, what we want to show is that all convergent sequences are bounded. And all I now need to show is that there exists a single point around which I can construct an open ball which will contain the entire set. So, uh, if, we have a, um, if we have a metric space, so let me draw a metric space again. Here is our metric space XD, and we have some sequence in here. So we have X1, X2 x3, etc. and you go on and on and on. And uh, basically, we are, what our initial assumption is that this is going to be convergent, and what we want to show is that if it is convergent, it will be bounded. So, we are going to say that the limit as uh, n approaches infinity of xn is equal to some limit L. So we'll say that there is some limit here, L, which this sequence is converging to in the metric space. Now, that the... the um, definition of this says that uh, for all epsilon greater than zero, there must exist a big N, uh, which is an element of the uh, natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that the distance between x little x little n and L is less than epsilon. So remember what this means. It means that you give me an epsilon, I will draw you an open ball around the limit L of that radius epsilon, so this is the open ball around the limit L of radius epsilon, and I will find you some uh, x big N, so this is uh, the point x big N, uh, such, that, uh, such that that point and all points after it are a distance away from L less than epsilon. I, I can find your point in the sequence after which all of these points are within uh, the open ball around uh, the uh, limit L of radius epsilon. Okay, so just pick whichever epsilon you want. Let epsilon equal 1. So what I know now is that I can construct, I can find you some point in the sequence, let's say x big N, which is dependent on 1, such that that point and all points beyond there, so if little n is now greater than or equal to n big 1, it implies that all of these terms of the sequence x little n are elements of this open ball uh, centered at the point L of radius epsilon. So a picture is in order. Here is our um, point L and I've forgotten to do the hashed lines again. So here is our open ball around L of radius 1. Uh, so I should have fixed that in as a specific value now. Epsilon is now fixed. So I've constructed the open ball of radius 1, and now I'm saying, because of the definition of convergence, I can find you some point x big N, which is specific to 1, such that that point and all of the points after it in the sequence are within this open ball uh, of radius uh, 1 around L. Well, that's looking pretty good, because now, how many terms are outside of that ball? There are some terms outside of that ball, potentially. Um, so we might have um, x, uh, n, uh, 1, minus 1. So the term prior to this in the sequence uh, is out, might be outside of that ball. Now, something to note is that some of these terms, uh, if we look at this entire sequence, think of the sequence again. So it started at x1, x2, and we went all the way up to x big N. I'm just going to drop the 1 because it's a bit cumbersome to have to write that. So I'm just going to call this N of 1 as just big N now. Uh, and then we went on, and after that, all of the terms here, uh, af all of these terms, were within this ball. What that does not mean, it does not mean that a few of these terms might not have been in this ball. So, for instance, x2 could have been in this ball of radius 1 around L. It, the definition does not say that these terms are not um, are not um, within the ball. What it says is that you can't pick any of these points uh, to be the point after for which and after which all the points are in the ball. Because x big N, it wasn't just that x big N was in the ball, it was that all of the terms after that were in the ball. So if x big N plus minus 1, so x big N minus 1 was not in the ball, then I could not have picked x2 
2 as the point uh, satisfying this definition because it would not be true that all points after x2 uh, were in the ball even though x2 was in the ball. So that great big discussion, all I was trying to say is that it's not necessary that all of the points of the sequence prior to x big n are outside of the ball. Some of them might indeed be inside the ball. However, the number of them that are outside of this ball is finite. At the maximum, we have n minus 1 terms outside of this ball. Okay, so what we now need to do is uh, to what we want to basically do is construct a bigger ball. Uh, so let me draw this in big blue pen so that you can see it. We want to construct like a bigger ball around this point uh, at L. Uh, such that it's going to contain not only this ball here, but it's also going to contain all of those finite number of points that are outside of the ball. Okay, and basically that should be possible because these were all finite. So, if I just take the uh, maximum of a set, which is firstly the set containing one, because we certainly want it the the dis the diameter the radius of this ball to be greater than or equal to one, so that it contains all of these, and then we add in the distance between L and x one, the distance between L and x two, etc., all the way up to the distance between L and x big n minus one then that should work, shouldn't it? Because now what I'm doing is I'm saying, let the radius of this big blue ball, so this is going to be our blue radius here, let this be the maximum of the radius of this inner ball, pl uh, uh, sorry, the radius of the inner ball, or the radius of the distance of all of these points. Because if I get the uh, distance between L and the what point that is absolutely furthest away from L, which is what this is saying to do. It's saying find the distance between L and the point, uh, the the point which is outside of this ball that is furthest away from L, and let the radius be equal to that. Because if that point was the one that's furthest away from L, then if we take the ball of radius. Um, Radio of that radius, it's going to contain absolutely all of these points that were outside of L. Okay, so I hope that's clear, that if we just, uh, because there is only finitely many of them outside of the ball, all we can do is go say, how far are you, uh, we can go off to each one of these points and ask, how far away are you from L? Good, okay. Uh, note them all down, and then just take the maximum of them, and if we construct the ball of radius, that radius, uh, that maximum distance, uh, then uh, we'll be sure to get all of the points in, because all of them will have a distance less than or equal to that. Uh, in fact, obviously, what we might want to do is consider taking the maximum and adding 1 to it. Uh, yes, that's probably a better thing to do, because um, otherwise uh, we might lose that last point, because if we take the radius um, to equal the distance between L and that final point, that point that's furthest away, then it, the ball, the open ball around L of that radius won't actually include that point, because that point is actually a distance equal to that. So let's add 1 to it to be safe, and um, then we'll have every single point inside there. So what I've done is I've constructed an open ball around a single point of the metric space, which contains this entire set, uh, which is the set of all points of the sequence. And that was the definition that we needed uh, for uh, this set of uh, containing all terms of the sequence to be bounded. And if the set's bounded, then the sequence is bounded. So that is the proof that all convergent sequences are bounded. The other way round is not true. It is not true that all bounded sequences are convergent. A very simple example would be if we... Um, I don't want to go on to another uh, clean sheet of paper, so we'll just do it down here. If you take the real line, the metric space, the real line, with the usual metric on it, and you just take the sequence 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, i.e. you flip from, let's say, this is the point 0, uh, and here's 1, here's minus 1. So you keep flitting between 1 and minus 1, 1 and minus 1, 1 and minus 1, etc. Uh, then that is clearly a bounded set, because if I take the, uh, the open ball around 0 of uh, radius 2, so the open ball around zero of radius two, then that's going to contain all the points of this sequence. Uh, but this is not a convergent sequence. It doesn't converge to anything. Okay, so that's all for this video.